<laughs> you can't go changing the rules. That's Joe. Them speaks mine. That's when you learn about people is when they're drunk. And then you realize who you're hired. And that's Eric. I was thinking about this earlier in the day. I have to bring it up. And there are two guys with two mics and one off the rails sports podcast. Like if you're older than 11 years old, unless you have body paint on or something, you're not warranted to go nuts on the jump. No, of course not. Kick back and relax because you're in the wheelhouse. All right, all right, let's go. Let's do this. In the wheelhouse with Eric and Joe, we got a great episode planned out. We got Super Bowl talk. We got crazy Philly fans, crazy Philly Eagles players. We got NBA trick. Hold on, wait. Oh, crap, Joe. I know we were going to do this show, but the Cavaliers just traded me, dude. They just tra- they traded every- the whole team when they just traded me. So we're gonna have to put. I don't. I don't know if I could do the podcast with you tonight, man. You're lucky they traded you now and you got updated. I got traded earlier today for a bag of pe- uh, bag of pretzels, dude. So, uh, roll uh, rolls gold. No, it was like Costco brand. Ah, oh, that's even worse, man. Yeah, shows your shows your um my value shows your value to the organization. Jeez. Uh, but no, so we're gonna do Super Bowl talk, NBA trade deadline, Cavs pretty much nuked their team today. Um, Jimmy G got paid. Should he have got paid? I don't know. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. Um, some implications on Joe's team, I think, has Aaron Rodgers contracts all in one little bubble there. Um, but how are you doing, Joe? How are you doing on a nice, lovely Thursday night in California? I'm doing great. It's mid-February, and it was like 80 degrees today. So you can't complain living in Southern California. <laughs> I was uh, working with some guys that were uh, based in Wisconsin today, and during one of the breaks, they're talking about, oh, yeah, the snow's coming eight inches, seven inches later this weekend, and I'm like, I might go to the beach this weekend, (laughs) and (laughs) wear a tank top. Snow's coming. Yeah. Sun's coming over here. About (laughs) 12 inches of sun. Yeah, you know, yeah, we got about um, 12 inches of rays, and uh, 12 inch uh, swells the thing, swells the surf thing. Yep. How well, good are you surfing, Joe? Uh, not good. I try. I haven't been surfing in like a year and a half, though. But I try. When was the last time you snowboarded? Ooh, probably. Like, ooh, probably like three years ago, four years ago. I'm right there with you. I, we're probably to, like on the same trip, honestly. We used to go snowboarding every single year. Every yeah, year. mammoth trips, big bear trips. You remember when we went to uh, Utah? And, yeah. the, and the blizzard came rolling over the top of the mountains, and mm-hmm. we were at the, we were at the top of the mountain, and we were like, we need to get off this mountain right now. <laughs> we need to get down to the halfway point and get in that in that building right now. And you guys all left, and I was stuck with uh, your teammate Robert up at the top. Oh yeah, <laughs> who would snowboard ten feet and fall, snowboard yeah, but he, ten. But feet he was and fall. fast. He was fast. He said that, and, was, that was his selling and, point. Uh, I was like, I'm I'm gonna die on this mountain today. I'm going to die, but we made it down and, uh, I'm still here today. So couldn't com- Can't complain. Can't complain. Thank God. Thank God you're here today. Cause if you weren't here today, I would have nobody to talk about Super Bowl 52 with Joe. Yeah. We kind of make a good duo here. Let's not end this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not do it. So Super Bowl 52, Joe, what a game. How did you were when Tom Brady flinged the hell Mary pass? Did you think the Patriots had a shot still? Absolutely. Uh, that. The game was nowhere near over until that last whistle blew. And when that when I saw that Hail Mary go into this the direction in which Gronk was in, I was like, There's no way this is gonna happen. There's no way he's gonna make this catch. And Ex- exactly, he did it. dude. We we've been so conditioned to just assume the Patriots are gonna pull stuff off like that. Like the second he escaped, because he had a little sidestep to get away from a sack. Mm-hmm. First of all, he chucked it sixty yards. Yeah, it was a nice throw. I'm I'm surprised he had that arm. Honestly, like it wasn't. It's not. He doesn't really show his his distance often, but he he got it there, sixty yards in the air, and it just goes to show, like till the very last second, it it looked like I'm like it was in the air. I'm like, well, Gronk's gonna catch it, and they're gonna pull two point conversion, and they're gonna win in overtime again. Mm-hmm. And and it was a tip. Another. It was almost like a replay of last year. They were down ten. At the half, they came mm-hmm. back. Their first lead came what nine minutes into the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. and and we were just and I was sitting there. I'm like, "Well, you tried, Eagles. You tried." Yeah. As soon as I saw 
I believe the Eagles kicked a field goal and it made it a six point game. And Tom Brady had the ball in his hands. I think it was something like nine minutes left. I was like, this is the point in the game where the Patriots just take over. And the same storyline happens. And they win their second Super Bowl in a row. And Tom Brady does it again. And you know what the crazy point about it is? Is the fact that we were, everybody, I'm pretty sure everybody had that feeling, right? And not only did they have to pull off the Hail Mary, but they needed a two-point conversion. So, But everybody still just assumed, oh, it's Tom Brady and the Patriots. They'll figure it out. Yeah, they got it. Literally, I didn't think the Patriots were anywhere near out of it until I saw four zeros up on the scoreboard. And, and even then, I was still like, all right, there's probably a flag somewhere. And Tom Brady's going to get one more chance at this. Or there's going to be a some kind of hold on the defense or a pass interference call or or something. And to be honest with you, that last play, I think if Tom Brady would have just thrown to the sidelines for another 20 yards, they might have had a shot at one more play. You think every single play on that last drive up until that Hail Mary, every completion got them probably 20-something yards. They're, he was dumping it off to Gronk on pretty much every single play. Gronk was getting out of bounds on every single catch that he made. It was, I think they could have had one more shot at one play and then heave toe at, with one second left. Or even maybe gotten them into somewhere close to field goal uh, range. But even that, you know, but, you but know field goal were, wouldn't even have mattered. Yeah, you know what they were doing was they learned from the mistakes of the New Orleans Saints. They had everybody way back on the goal line. They weren't going to miss a tackle and have a, a game, or maybe it was going to be a game ending in this situation, but they weren't going to have a missed tackle on a wide open field. They had, they gave them the, the dink and dunk plays, the 20 yard chunks, because they started the drive on their six, right? Or six or nine. It was within 10 so, yards. Yeah. Time. Well, they tried that, they tried that stupid, uh, oh, the reverse, the on, reverse the kickoff. on the kickoff. And they almost fumbled it on that, on that reverse as well. What were they doing? I mean, you're... dude, Bill Belichick, probably whoever called that play, he probably ripped their balls off after the game. Well, so Pinned there's them like, there's some, there's some things even Tom Brady can't do. There was also something else, um, that was really weird about the game. Um, Goskowski missing kicks. No, 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 no. They had, um, excuse me. The, the Patriots, had a DB who was one of their starting DB the entire season. Started every game in the playoffs. And for some reason, in this game, in, in the Super Bowl. Oh, Malcolm Butler. Thank you. Did, yeah, Mal- didn't, that, yeah didn't Malcolm even, Butler. Didn't not- even see the field. Like, not one snap. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, the whole Malcolm Butler story, because there's really no truth that has come out he's denied things that it's disciplinary um he there it's a belichick's just saying he didn't want to play him because he wasn't playing well um but he played but malcolm, Bl- malcolm he Butler's one the, game. the hero he's the hero what four years ago when he picked off the the td on the goal line is that four, no, was that four years or that three years ago uh or, let's see so well now Falcons, now now it would so be, be three yeah three now four yeah but yeah i I've heard nothing about why he was not playing. I haven't. There's no official reason. There's only pointing the figures, and we're not going to get anything. The season's over. There's no going to be no media availability for anybody in the Patriots organization until when March owners meeting something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's he started. He started every game. Am I mistaken here, or am I right? Like he played. No, every, he played something like eighty percent of their defensive uh, snaps this year. Right, and so it's so mind-boggling in how he didn't even see the field in this game. And again, there's no reports on disciplinary action. There's no reports on uh, team suspension. There's no reports on anything. And how is how's Bill Belichick going to say that he hasn't been performing when he's been, like you just said, in 80% of the team's defensive snaps? It makes no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely and there's player there's reports of players questioning the call because it's like you 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 penalize the whole team. Sure, this guy's not going to make, um, you know, a super big impact, but you know, it's he's a starter. He's a starter for a reason, and um, he's at least maybe going to break up one or two of those big ass chunk plays that the Eagles are playing. Cause that was it was a shootout. The whole game was a shootout, and maybe he's the difference on one of those big time plays that. You know, Alshon Jeffrey going up or Zach Ertz over the middle, something like that. Uh, and I, I don't want to interrupt you here, but 
I want to remind you about a comment I made last episode. What, how, what did I say this game was going to be? A shootout? A shootout. And I don't want to remind you, you no. who picked the Eagles to win, Joe. <laughs> okay, so if we're retra- retracing our steps. I want to point out who picked the Eagles, who had the cojones. <laughs> you, but you know who had cojones was Doug Peterson that game. Two, two fourth down calls, a trick play on fourth and one. Yeah. And to did, Nick Foles. Did you hear? Did you see the mic'd up video of Nick Foles? Oh, yeah. That was so he, he good. He called the play, he dude. called I, that play, oh. and Peterson looks at him dead in the eyes. He's like, yeah, let's do yeah, it. Let's do let's it. Let's do it. All right. Philly, cool. Philly, Philly special. Let's do it. It was so good. And everyone, as soon as you see Nick Foles run up to the line to kind of adjust the O-line, and you see, uh, I forgot which receiver it was. Was it Aguilar? That was, or... Um, or maybe it was Clement, one of the bat, one of the running backs behind center. I was like, "Oh, here it comes! Here it comes, Wildcat!" And then you see Nick Foles wide open in the flats. I'm like, "Bravo!" Peterson. And the fact that Bravo. he does that, the fact that he does that, what two, three, four drives after Tom Brady, the exact same play, and Tom Brady can't come up with a wide open pass off his fingertips, right? And, Tom Brady looked like an old man trying to catch that ball too. Dude, Did he not? Tom Brady, Tom Brady in the pocket looks amazing. Yeah, looks like a ma- magician. Can't see his age. The second he has to start moving his legs, and the second he's out in the open field, he looks like a baby deer. Yeah. Oh, dude. He. Have you seen his forty t- his forty time video no. at the NFL draft? Dude, no. look it up when we're done with this. He can't, he has no mobility. He he looks like he's a giraffe running out there. Oh my goodness. He's too long, too lanky. But, uh, dude, honestly, I'm so happy we're talking about an uh, Eagles victory and not a Patriots victory here today. Yeah, everyone wanted the Eagles to win, and I doubted the the Eagles once again, and I didn't see Nick Foles doing what he did to Minnesota, to the Patriots, and congratulations, Philadelphia they, they, Eagles. They proved everybody wrong, dude. Yep, congratulations, Nick Foles. Congratulations, the city of Philadelphia. You finally got your Super Bowl. Nick you Foles. finally got to riot, Philadelphia. Nick, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. Nick Foles won beat, Super Bowl MVP. He, and beat Tom Brady. If you told me this three years ago, that in three years Nick Foles will win the Super Bowl, win the MVP, and beat Tom Brady in the process, I'd have been like, okay, I'll bet you $1,000 that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's like, well, I am now homeless because I lost my house. Yeah, exactly. No the, no one saw this coming. And Nick Foles capitalized on the opportunity of a lifetime. And he rode that horse into the sun. So what do you think the the Eagles should do here? So You Nick sell Foles, Nick obviously- Foles while he's high. Do you? Absolutely. Because knee problems are lingering sometimes. Like, I understand Car- you think Carson, Carson Wentz. Carson not going to come back fully no, healthy? No, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Obviously, it's Carson Wentz's team. And then for the people, I saw a couple blog posts out there. Oh, Nick Foles should start. Blah, blah. Go, go jump off a cliff. You're just the clickbait nonsense. Dumb, dumb. But knee problems suck, dude. I'm just saying, like, Nick Foles already proved that he's a capable backup. The possible, like, they could bring they could bring in a load of assets with what Nick Foles just did. Sell high, trade him to somebody that's willing to give him give him a house, give him everything in the in the system just because Nick Foles just did what he did. But at the same time, knee problems are knee problems, dude. Let me ask you this. Do you really think a team is going to have a Super Bowl MVP sitting on the bench when they could go out there, use him in a trade, and bring back exactly what their team needs? What does their team need? They just won the Super Bowl. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you know, they need like, I'm, something. I'm, I, get, I get what you're saying, like the value. Like you don't want to pass up this value, but you you. Just saw what having him as a backup did. Like, if he's not a backup, what other backup in the league can do that? I mean, Case Keenum kind of had, did had a very similar season, but Jimmy Garoppolo was a was a backup, and we'll yeah, get to so what he did few, and what he just earned himself. But look at the situation in in Houston, having a career year. People are talking about playoff birth. People are talking about contenders. Deshaun Watson goes down, horrible backup. Um, 
Uh, I'm I'm blanking on any other opportunities, but like, look, like I think reliable, capable backup QBs Green Bay. are a dime a dozen. Yeah, Green Bay. They they lo- they went what one and six after Aaron Rodgers went down, something like that. Yeah. So like, I think you just saw what you need. You need to have somebody back there. So I wouldn't be totally against holding on to him. He's a nice guy. He's a team player. And Carson, you don't you never know how somebody's going to rebound from a knee injury. I I understand that. I do. I really do. But let me ask you this as well. I'm not too sure on what Nick Foles' contract is, if it's up at the end of the year or, or I think what he has it is. One year left. I, one I think year he's left. On contract next okay. year. So say he sits behind Carson once next year on the bench. He's still going to be asking for the house in that contract talk. I don't think so, dude. I think he's done after this contract because he's he's a Christian guy. He wants to be a pastor. He's on his way out of the end of his career, dude. I don't think he signs another contract. He's got his MVP. He's got his Super Bowl ring. Well, then, he's then, had a storybook then, then, career. Then if that's the case and you know he's not going to sign another contract, why wouldn't you trade him to get assets? If you, if you know you only have him for one more year. Because of the possibility, dude. You just saw a Carson Wentz go down. And but, but my thing is, my thing is, you could bring back the house for this guy. And you know... You're only going to have him for one more year. You could potentially get starting wide receivers that will last you five, six, seven years for for Nick Foles. You know yeah, what I'm I mean, saying? You, no, yeah, I get you. Yeah, you're, you're, I think you're it's a very say, valid you're saying, point. But you're saying sit on this guy, let him be the backup just in case Carson Wentz gets hurt again, instead of selling him and getting back vital pieces for the long run for the. Year after year. And you're only going to have Nick Foles for one more year. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer to me. I don't know, dude. I I just feel like you have to have and you have to have a backup. Here's the thing that I think, too. Carson Wentz's injury was a freak injury. It wasn't like it was a non-contact injury. It was a contact injury. So you know his, he's not weak. This happened because of a, of a tackle and his leg just went the wrong way. You know? You can't sit here and say that this freak ac- this freak accident is going to happen again the very next season. I mean, it could it happen? Yeah, but it's not likely. Yeah, I get, I understand completely, but I'm I like to have a little bit of stability and, you know, you two-headed will. monsters are nice. You you will have stability. Carson Wentz is your starting quarterback. He would have won the MVP if he didn't get hurt. And it was a freak accident. I don't think Nick Foles I, I, is going to be in bu- a Buffalo Bill next year, isn't he? Nick Foles should probably be. Mm, maybe Miami. No, Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill's there. At, at this point, would you take Foles over Tannehill? I mean, if Nick Foles goes down there, it's just a matter of time before Ryan Tannehill gets hurt again anyways. He'll be the starter by, like, week five. <laughs> same situation he did this year. So, just wait for Tannehill to hurt his knee again. It's the same situation. If I was Miami, I'd jump all over that. You, you'd yeah. want – I mean, Bill, Bill's kind of have their guy in Tyrod. No, there he's gone, dude. You think so? He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Writing's on the wall. He's gone. Hmm. For sure. He's not, he's not going to be back. Huh. Well, okay. I'm going to burn my, my, my Tyrod jersey. So – we had a couple like storylines that we were talking about last week that would happen after the Super Bowl, and, and one of my storylines was uh, that the Eagles would win the Super Bowl and split up the three-headed monster of Belichick, Kraft, and Brady. Now, Josh McDaniels just came out and said that he's staying with the Patriots. Is that kind of a foreshadowing that Belichick might be out of there? I think I don't think a, a this year thing, but I think it might have been a hey, Belichick's not going to be here for the long haul anymore. You know, like he's on his way out soon. I don't know how soon, but I mean, if it if that wasn't the case, I don't know what Josh McDaniels is doing because he's not getting hired anywhere else in the league ever again. Like he just burned every single bridge in the league. So he's New England right. bust at this point. Right, exactly. And the reason why I bring this up is that job in New York is still there. And Belichick has been rumored to go to to be, have, be in talks with the New York Giants. So 
it's kind of like a, is there something going on right now? It makes you think, right? Yeah, it does, but I don't. I don't think so, man. I think I think Belichick will be there as long as Brady's there. But but you but you have seen that there's turmoil between Kraft oh, yeah, and yeah. Belichick, Brady and Belichick. There's turmoil there, and when you, when there's an opportunity pointed right in front of your face in the New York Giants for Belichick, I mean, it's. I wouldn't say it's a 100% sure thing that Belichick's going to be back in New England. No, it's definitely not, just because like nothing's 100% certain in the NFL well, ever. Yeah, but you know um, what I but, mean. You know no, yeah, I mean. but I don't think I don't I I get what you're saying and I think an under definitely a major factor in McDaniel's backing out of the Colts deal and pretty much leaving him at the altar is a fact that hey, Belichick only has maybe, you know, a certain amount, a handful of years left, and he'd better honestly, he'd better be the heir apparent after what he just did because you know you can only be an offensive coordinator for so long, right? And honestly, you look at the Colts, so now the Colts are going after um, uh, the Eagles' offensive coordinator. So, on, did they upgrade? I mean, the Eagles' offensive coordinator beat Josh McDaniels, so. Um, the, the, I mean the 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 pairing of yeah, McDaniel's but, but you're, and but you also got to compare the defenses on that as well. Yeah, the Eagles and, defense I mean, is head over heels better than the New England Patriots defense. And the the pairing between McDaniel's and Andrew Luck, a lot of people were saying was going to be uh, McDaniel's Brady esque and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. um, that's if Andrew Luck comes back. Yeah, if he can throw a football, you know, he hasn't thrown a football in like two years. M- yeah, like he hasn't thrown a football and. <laughs> I was watching Chris Ballard's news conference talking about McDaniel's back and out. He's like, "Oh, Andrew Luck's healthy, blah blah blah. He's he's practicing his throwing motion. He hasn't picked up a football, but he's throwing balls." I'm like, "Okay, it's good for if he's playing baseball. Like, <laughs> was he playing dodgeball? Yeah, what is he? Do? What is he throwing? The bocce balls? Like, what the hell was he doing out there? <laughs> he's bowling? I don't care if he's throwing balls. I want to know if he's throwing a football, dude. It's is complete." He- Throwing golf balls to down on the yeah, ground? Yeah, it's like it's the only ball that's not actually round. Like it's oblong. Like that's the most hard ball to throw. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I don't think Andrew looks coming back anywhere near what he used to be. That's for sure. No, nah, dude. Shoulder injuries aren't nice, and especially a, a lingering shoulder injury like this too. That's one that he has to better. go to a foreign country to repair because of some un- unknown reason. Like, right. I, it's. I think his career is done. I think he's it, done. It's bad, dude. Like that that the Colts organization right now is just is so upside down. Nobody knows what's going on. Jim Ursa is a crazy owner. Chris Ballard's just trying to like weather the storm whenever anything hits the fan. It's just like everything goes wrong for the Colts. What was your favorite moment in the Super Bowl? My favorite moment, this is kind of mean, but um Brandon Cooks got lit up, dude. He got dropped. Brandon got Cooks dropped. got steamrolled. Yeah, he did. Um, I have a that was a fu- that was a fun moment for me just because I like big clean hits, and that was a clean hit. I mean, I know he got flagged, but I think it was clean. Split decision, split reaction hits like that are going to be hard to do. Um, what was another big moment? The Foles trick play was good. Um. You know, I, I'm I glad. I, I'm glad Gronk had a good game. He had a really good game. When when he they came out of the second half and they went to him about what four of the five plays on the first drive of the second half. Mm-hmm. I thought finally I was like, okay, well they realized, hey, we have this big ass white dude. Throw him the ball and he's gonna catch the ball. But I mean, it all kind of fell apart at the end. But yeah, he had a great game. What do you have? Two touchdowns, something like a hundred something yards. Great yeah. game out of Gronk. I'm, Did you see his house got robbed while he was out at the Super Bowl? Get out of here! Did it really? Swear, dude. He he got home back home to his house and he was robbed while he was in Minnesota. That's terrible. Just like Puig was get, Puig was robbed during Game Seven of the World Series. Yeah, it's like, terrible, man. That's just awful, dude. And how bad would it be? You just lost the biggest game of your career. Well, not the biggest game, like because he's already won a couple. Um, but like you just lost and you come home and your house has been Mugged. ransacked. Yeah, that's- like just bad absolutely terrible but needless to say it was a great super bowl i mean probably one of the best super bowls that we've had in a while um back to back dude back to back really good super bowls yeah i probably back to back to back really good super bowls the year before that was when brady 
or when Butler. No. Yeah. So it would be, I would say three out of the last four because the one before that was, so it was, Oh no, you're this right. This year was, there was a, a Broncos Panthers one in the middle. there. Right. That was terrible. Yeah. That was, and yeah. The, 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 the Panthers the last got th- smacked. The last threes <laughs> that the Patriots have been in. That yeah. Good. <laughs> God. Just keep the Patriots in the Super Bowl. It's always a good game. Ah, uh, dude, it sucks because it's true, man. It sucks because it's true. Um, so the other big news in the NFL today is 49ers signed Jimmy Garoppolo to a five year extension. What was the deal? Five year, hundred and thirty seven mil. Five year, one hundred thirty seven and a half mil. Make- including ninety million guaranteed in the first three years, largest three year deal in NFL history. Making him the highest paid player ever. For a guy that has played five or started six games in the NFL. You know, it reminds me a little bit of when Houston signed Brock Osweiler when he played like four games because Peyton Manning went down in the middle of the season. And then Houston signed him to something ridiculous like Four years, eighty-eight million dollars, and he's played four yep. games. Like, I mean, take it. I think it's a little bit different because Garoppolo has just had unreal success in those five games with a team that no one thought could really do anything in the Forty ers Yeah, he flipped. He flipped the team season in in five starts. They're predicted to be a playoff team next year now because of Garoppolo. Like, so in my eyes. When you have a guy like this that is capable of flipping a franchise around, it might not be a bad idea to sign him long term like this. I mean, long term, but with that, I mean, it's only three years. Or well, it's not only three years, but it's five years. But it's like that much money. Like maybe give him a bridge deal that's only two or three years, and then make him give him a big contract. Well, see, but the problem, I w- the problem I is, is that the 49ers got him after his rookie contract. That's where you you get the filling out process. They didn't have that buffer zone, and it's a lot of money, dude. Well, that's what I'm saying. What I was gonna say is I don't really mind the number involved as far as his five years ago, what I'm more concerned about if I'm a 49ers fan or if I'm in the 49ers front office is that $90 million guaranteed. That's what I'm more worried about, you know, because he really hasn't proven himself again. He's only played five games. Of course, those five games were stellar on his end, but let him prove himself a little bit more and give him a clause in that contract. It's like, if you perform the way you did over this next season, over your next three, you're, your contract that was that was 15 mil guaranteed this year is now 25 mil guaranteed every year. Yeah, I mean, he took he took a 1 in 10 team and won the final 5 games of the season. So it's kind of one of those things that's you're suffering from, you know, what just happened because you see how good things can be and how could they will will, will be compared to how bad things were before he got there. Um, so I understand why they gave him the money, but dude, the, the, like you said, the 90 million guaranteed, he's a QB. He's going to be taking hits. Um, it can handcuff a team, man. That's for sure. Right. I mean, and it's going to have, like you said in the intro, this is going to have some pretty big, a pretty big rippling effect on the quarterbacks coming into free agency. Um, you look at, Aaron Rodgers, for instance, he's got one more year in his contract, and then he's going to free agency, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. So he's slated to make $19.8 million next season. Um, it's it's You look at it, it's like same thing with Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is looking to make a, a deal soon here too, but it's like, Aaron Rodgers, Super Bowl champion, NFL MVP. Well, Aaron Rodgers has two years left. He has 2018 season, and he's got the 2019 season. Yeah, but so he's gonna be he's gonna want a new contract here soon, right. locking him up long term. Right. So you look at him; it's Super Bowl champ, Aaron Rodgers. So it's, you just look at the numbers: Aaron Rodgers, Super Bowl champ, NFL MVP in the league. Everybody knows what he can do. Everybody sees how bad the Packers are without him. How valuable he is as a player. And he's only making what'd you say, nineteen something a year? Nineteen this upcoming year, twenty in two thousand nineteen. Jimmy Garoppolo five starts games. six games total in his career, 
making one hundred thirty seven and a half million dollars over five years. Twenty seven point so, five a year. I mean, just comparing player to player, like Aaron Rodgers should be making like two hundred mil over four. Well, right. I mean, you compare the two guys, and it's light and day the the stat lines for sure. Um, I think it's just a indication of how much the 49ers actually believe in Jimmy G. I mean, the fact that they went out there and traded, I mean, they didn't really give up very much to get him in the first oh, place. They, they kind of, they kind of capitalized on a really bad situation in new England. Yeah, they, they um pretty much capitalized on Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft fighting and them saying, hey, let's get him out of the AFC and ship him over the the West Coast. Right, and not only that, but like you look at some of the other guys that are in the league right now. Matt Stafford, of course, he's an excellent quarterback. He's making 27 a year. Derek Carr, who fell on his face this year, is making 25 a year. It's guys like Aaron Rodgers are going to be asking for the boat in their upcoming contract negotiations. That's for sure. And whoever is going out there and is interested in Kirk cousins, he's going to be doing the same thing, even though he really hasn't had the success like Aaron Rodgers has had. I don't really, I think Kirk cousins has made a super, the playoffs what twice in his career. Yeah. He's nowhere near that has ha- he's no, not even the same breath as Aaron Rodgers. I definitely dude. think he's in the same breath. Those like Derek Carr. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you look at Alex Smith just got paid. Yeah, Derek Carr got paid last year after having a big year in in, in Oakland. Like these guys just c- cash in on big contracts after great years, and then they fall off. So where? Do so you, I'm just hoping it's not a Jimmy G situation. So where do you think Kirk Cousins is going to land? I'm trying to think of all the teams right now that are in need of a of a quarterback. And if I go through the teams, I mean, you go through the NFC West. None of those teams really need a quarterback. Well. Arizona. Arizona, Arizona, and that's actually been like rumored to be his landing place. Arizona right? would be nice. So let's go through right here in the NFL right now. You need a quarterback in Arizona, Arizona, New York Jets, New York Jets, Buffalo Bills, Cleveland Browns. Depending if what they do at the draft, what do you, um, what do you think about Jacksonville, Denver Broncos? Oh, Denver, Denver for sure. Denver Broncos could swoop in and take Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins playing under John Elway. Mm. That'd be nice. Yep. Yep. You think Jacksonville? It's, a lot of it's going to. Hold on. Hold on. Do you think Jacksonville has their eyes on Kirk Cousins? No, no. Not, they, um, just they, they're committed to Bortles because they just did the, sir, something in his contract, which uh, because he did some surgery in last week or so, which means they picked up an option for his next year. So they're oh, connect, okay. they're they're locked in on Bortles. Gotcha. Um, a lot of this is going to depend on what happens at the draft. Who takes quarterbacks where and where quarterbacks fall of into course. whose laps. So, so you're so you're um, saying Kirk Cousins doesn't get signed till after the draft? No, no, I don't think so. Well, I see. That's where I might say you're wrong there, because why wouldn't a team lock in a known solid quarterback in their quarterback spot in order to focus on different aspects of their roster that they need? Well, if it's that case, then I feel like it's it's going to come closer to draft, and it's going to be a team lower in the order that can't get a shot at you know a generational t- or not a generational, but a young gun that's going to be young and good for in the next handful of years, like a Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, maybe even a Baker Mayfield. I I don't agree with that. Look how many quarterbacks come into the league and how many crap out. I mean, you think one out of ten quarterbacks that come into the league out of the draft end up having somewhat of a decent career? This year's different, dude. How is it different? These quarterbacks are different. They say these quarterbacks they say, are better. They say these quarterbacks every year are going to be they're going to be Hall of Fame quarterbacks. They're going to be this and that. That's and it never happens. It never happens. How many? You, the last time, the last time they touted a, a quarterback class like this, it was Jared Goff and Carson Wentz. And look at them; they're both playoff QBs this year. And this Q, these these QBs and, you know, are gonna be know, better, you, dude. You know, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. I don't know about the Josh Allen let, kid. Let from me Wyoming. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So at that draft, Car, uh, Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, it was pretty much the Rams at the number one pick, and everyone was trying to debate whether they should take Jared Goff, Carson Wentz. If Rams went with Carson Wentz over Jared Goff, are they in the Super Bowl? I don't know, man. It's that's hard to tell because you have the Jeff Fisher effect in effect. 
and you don't know what Jeff Fisher does to stunt that growth. Doug Peterson's a vital role. I mean, you could say, I mean, honestly, Jared Goff could have been way better than Carson Wentz being in a different system with, you know, Doug Peterson last year. True, very true. So it's 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 hard to paint that picture. I mean, it could easily be argued, that's for sure. Um, but, I mean, Jeff Fisher is a, will stunt anybody's growth. That's that's 100% true on your end. <laughs> but, but, yeah, going back to Kirk Cousins, if I'm a if I'm a GM and I know that our quarterback position is open, I would definitely be more inclined go out there, spend the money for a for sure NFL talented quarterback, then go out there into the draft for uh, a guy that you don't really know if he's going to pan out or not. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. Um, but at the it's, same time, it's like Kirk Cousins isn't. You know, somebody that you're sitting here crossing your fingers hoping you get because it's he's he, sure he he has he's put up decent numbers, but he's faulty in big games. He's been under five hundred. Like I would put cars. I put Kurt Warner. I'm sorry, Kurt Warner. I would put Kurt, Kurt Cousins in probably the top seven careful, seven, careful. seven quarterbacks in the league. Seven, yeah. I'd give him maybe top ten. But I don't know top seven. Seven for sure, dude. I mean, who's I mean, you look who's top top seven right now in no particular order, just off top of my head. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Brady Cam Newton, Stafford. At the back end, Stafford, mm, Matt Ryan, uh, on the back end, on the back end, on the back end, um, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson. Oh hell yeah! On the front end, like dude runs for his life every <laughs> Sunday and kills, and. Exactly. No, 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 no. I'm I'm trying to remember what teams I said. And I'm looking hold on, I need to pull up a picture of the logo so I can see. And Ben Roethlisberger. No, dude. No. You don't think Ben Roethlisberger Roethlisberger is better than Kirk Cousins? Ben Roethlisberger is better than Kirk Cousins because he has weapons. Kirk Cousins has nobody. Big big Carson ben- Wentz, dude. We didn't even say Carson Wentz. Jared Goff. I don't know, man. I, 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 he, I'll give, I'll give you top ten, but I'm not giving you like top seven or. All five right, all right, all right. We'll agree top ten then. I'll, I'll agree with you, top ten. Like floating on ten, eleven, <laughs> plus or minus hey, one, probably plus one. Stop pushing it, man. <laughs> Dude, Drew. We didn't even say Drew Brees. Yeah, but how much he's longer is Drew Brees? Yeah, have? I mean Drew Brees. Yeah, he's he's getting. He, yeah, but. And then, I mean. All right. Realistically, probably top ten. Yeah, I I'd give him top. Ten. All right, no, so, it's, so you that, know it's funny. So hold on, real quick. Home, I, I'm that, looking. Okay, go ahead. I'm looking at the logos right now, and I'm looking at the Baltimore Ravens one. Joe Flacco is so bad, dude. And he's making twenty million a year. <laughs> he, he's one of the guys that. I mean, it's a perfect conversation. We're talking about QBs and money. He's the perfect example of I cashed in on a great year, and I have not been anywhere near as good ever since. Yeah, right. There's been a lot of the. I mean, not a lot, but there's been quite. Quite a decent amount of those guys who cash in on a huge year, and then Ryan, we are, Ryan Fitz uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick did that to the Bills back in like what was it 2013? We started out like five and two, gave him like 40 mil. I think we won one game the rest of the season. <laughs> so bad, so bad. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, we didn't say James Winston either. You put James Winston in your top ten? Hell no. Not after Dude, this season. We were so high on the Bucks. I was. We were so high on the Bucks in the beginning of the season. We pumped their tires so <laughs> effing much this year, dude. <laughs> they won. We were, won we, they're going to win game. the NFC South. Jameis Winston, Mike Evans, dude. It's going to be so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and they were so bad. They they got in more fights than they won games. I feel like <laughs> every week they're in a fight. We were so big on them this off season, and every single team in that division besides them. We're ballers. <laughs> yeah, we picked we, in the the one division where three of four were good. We picked the one bad team. <laughs> like if you look at like I literally, let's think, I, I literally think we like we picked them to go to the Super Bowl or at least the NFC uh, oh, championship. Oh yeah, we 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 picked them to do some damage. So if you like, if you look in every division, so let's see NFC East. I'd give them two of the four. The Cowboys maybe so maybe just one of four. Honestly, the the Eagles were good. NFC North. The Vikings, wait, what, the Lions, wait, maybe what, what, the Lions you, a little bit. I don't, I don't know what you're doing right now. I'm trying. I'm going through the divisions and saying, out of the four, how many were actually good this year? Oh, okay. 
Okay, so let's go with the NFC East real quick. Cowboys, eh. Giants, no. Mm-hmm. Eagles, yes. Redskins, no. Nah. Eh. They're fighting. NFC, they're fighting for a playoff spot at the end. NFC North, Bears, no. Nope. Lions, eh. Mm. Packers, no. Vikings, yes. NFC South, we just went over three of four. Bucks were the only bad one. NFC West, Cardinals, eh. No. Rams, yes. 49ers, no. Maybe no, just, now. You, we can't be persuaded by the last. They were they were one in ten at one point. Right. And then Seahawks. Mm, they didn't. Yeah, they were nine and seven. So Russell Wilson was good. Yeah, AFC East, the Patriots. I mean, the Bills had a chance, but we blew it. And if AFC North, the Steelers. That's really it. Mm-hmm. AFC South, Jacksonville. That's really it. Tennessee. AFC, they're, no, they're kind of phonies. Yeah, they're phonies. AFC West. Was anybody good in the AFC West this year? I mean, I, I guess the Chiefs were good in the beginning. The Chargers were good at the end. I think, I mean, God, if the Chargers would have started off 2-2 two and two instead of 0-4, oh they would have yeah, been in the playoffs. If they would have had somebody that could at least kick a ball. Yeah. One time out of four times, they would be AFC West champions. They, just, they need to hold open tryouts for their kicker position. They really do. Because they need to find a solid kicker that's going to be there for the long haul instead of just having a different kicker every single year. I mean, repeating the same mistakes every single year. There's soccer players there every other day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> just go on an off day whenever the Galaxy are playing and whenever there's a visiting team and say, hey, dude, you want to make a lot more money and be a lot more famous? Play in the NFL. <laughs> You're so right by that comment, dude. <laughs> like, like, dude, there's soccer players that get paid to kick balls professionally. Yeah. I'm, every other day pr- of the year. I'm pretty sure that uh, David Beckham just retired pretty recently. Go get David Beckham. I'm pretty sure he could kick a ball pretty far. Dude, he probably could. Imagine imagine that publicity stunt. David, like Tim Tebow being in the Mets system. No, he's in the, like, he, dude, he's with the Yankees now. Tim Tebow? Yeah. No, he's in the Mets system still. No, dude, he? I'm, he, I'm pretty sure, I, I heard something that they were going, like, MLB Tonight was talking about Tim Tebow. Because you know how Russell Wilson just got traded to the Got Yankees, traded to right? the Yankees, yeah, yeah. And they were saying, in their spring training, what they should do is have a, a football uh, competition between Aaron Judge and Mike Stanton, or John Carlos Stanton, and then have a ho- uh, home run derby between Russell Wilson and Tim Tebow. I was like, wait a minute, is Tim Tebow in the Yankees organization now? And now I'm, now I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure he's in the Mets, dude. Yeah, he's still with the Mets. <laughs> I'm all good. I'm wrong. But dude, on, could you imagine being so good at sports that you're just like? Yeah, I'll go play baseball. Bo Jackson did. At one Deion point, Sanders. Russell. At one point, there's going to be a point in Russell Wilson's career where he wakes up on a Monday morning mm-hmm. after willing the Seattle Seahawks to another come from behind victory, where he just slings up past a Doug Baldwin as he's rolling out to his right or whatever, and he's like, "You know what? I'm tired of running for my life every week. I'm tired of dealing with this O line. I'm tired of getting hit." I'm going to go play baseball. I'm going to go live in New York with Sierra. First of all, I'm married to Sierra, so there's no really bad day of my life. But I'm tired of getting hit because my team can't protect me, and I'm running for my life every Sunday afternoon. I'm going to go play baseball, and I'm going to go be a New York Yankee. It's going to happen. I don't know if he makes the MLB. I don't think he would. You think he would? You don't, th- you don't think he'd be, he'd be like a good infielder? Maybe uh I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he might not have the range to be like a second baseman or a shortstop. Maybe a first baseman. Think, what do you think about first baseman? Yeah, but to be a first baseman, you got to hit. And I don't think you hit. I'd love to see bat. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be videos coming out. I, he's I, he's got to be better at baseball than Tim Tebow. Tim, he just strikes me as a better athlete. Dude, Tim Tebow's pretty solid. Have you seen the videos of him? He's pretty good. Yeah, but but he's not MLB good. I no, feel like the yeah, same thing for Russell Wilson. I don't think Russell Wilson is MLB Russ, good. I feel just looking at the two of them, I feel Russell Wilson would be closer to MLB good than Tim Tebow would be to MLB good. Why? Cuz he's why cuz he's been invited to spring training before for PR No, stuff? no, no. I just look at I just look at their body type and like their athleticism. I feel like Tim Tebow's too big, like, meaty to be a baseball player. I feel the agility aspect and, like, the mobility of Russell Wilson is 
kind of pushing me to lean Russell Wilson. Like I see him run around on the field every day. Hold on, or every hold on. week. Agility and mobility. Tim Tebow's main main weapon as a quarterback was his mobility and agility. But who's better than that? Russell Wilson is better at no, no, that no, no. than Tim no, no, Tebow no, no. is. Not necessarily was. better. It's just that Russell Wilson could throw the ball and Tim Tebow can. Russell Wilson can actually play quarterback and Tebow could is a running back trying to play quarterback. Russell Wilson would still be better at baseball than Tim <laughs> Tebow. <laughs> we'll never find point. out. We'll never find out. <laughs> <sighs> Now starting, New York Yankee first baseman, Russell Wilson. <laughs> You're crazy. God, what what would um, oh, what's the play, uh, Yankees play by play guy's name? I forgot his uh, name, but he has the best calls. Yeah, what's what would uh what would his call for Russell Wilson's home run be? Russ, you know, like Gary, no, no, is no, scary. no, it'd be, it'd be this. It'd be it'd be like there is a deep drive. Going out, it's good. Russell Wilson with oh, the home run. A football pun. It was, or, that's bad. It was totally okay, we, a football pun. We haven't done this yet. We haven't done this yet. I actually went to do it, but I totally blew my mind. Okay, Giancarlo Stanton's home run call. What is it going to be? Oh. It has to be a Stanton Island pun. Oh, pun. that's not a bad idea. A Staten Island drive by Giancarlo. Or, or like, uh, Staten hits it out of Staten Island or something like that. Or hits it to Staten Island. Where do the Yankees play? The Bronx? I don't know, man. I think the Bronx. I should know this. Yeah, you probably should. I think the Bronx. I'm assu- assuming somewhere in New York. Oh, you think? <laughs> That was that was bad. Um, <laughs> okay, you want to get basketball talk here? Are I was doing football. I literally pulled a basketball like five minutes ago. And yeah, ready to talk basketball. We got we got we got sidetracked into, into baseball. Baseball's coming up, by the way. Pitchers catchers report in what four or five days? So happy. If if there's a spring training, I mean that whole stalemate between the NFL, I mean MLB, MLB players. It's not going to happen. Scott Boris holds. The is the representative representative for a lot of the big name guys, and Scott Boris already came out saying, "My guys aren't going to any of these free agent spring trains. We have the facilities, we have diamonds, we have batting cages. They're going to our facilities, and they'll be ready for spring training." You know who's probably behind all this gridlock? Jerry Depoto. I hate you, Jerry Depoto. It's probably him, dude. He's probably the one saying, "No, don't sign. Screw, screw baseball." He's stupid. He's, Jerry he's trying to spend time doing his podcast. <laughs> the fake, w- the wheelhouse. I hate you, Jerry. You gotta be in the wheelhouse, bro. It's not just called. Who says? Oh yeah, that's the wheelhouse. No, the phrase is in the wheelhouse, dude. Turn your mic off. Shut up, Depoto. God. All right, let's let's wrap up this with some NBA talk. So the Cleveland Cavaliers went nuclear on their roster today. You sent me a text saying that the Cavaliers went nuclear. I was like, what are you talking about? And, what does that mean? And then, <laughs> and then I went on Twitter. I was like, oh. Oh, they went nuclear. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the guy's name that's a big Twitter guy? Uh, Warjanowski? Yeah, Woj Bombs. Yeah, and I see eight or nine tweets from him. I'm like, oh, they traded him. Oh, they traded him. Oh, oh, oh. It's like six players getting dished from the Cavs. And it looked at first like the Cavs are kind of unloading to kind of rebuild. But then I look at the guys they got back and I'm like, the Cavs are better now. Oh, dude, they they totally are are better. So in in a nutshell, the Cleveland Cavaliers traded away Isaiah Thomas, Channing Fry, Dwayne Wade, Derrick Rose, Derrick Rose. Jay Crowder, Iman Shumpert, and six players, and their eighth pick in the first round, and a, or, yeah, uh, and a first round, first pick. round pick, excuse me, and a first round pick. They got back Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance from the from the Lakers, a second round pick for Dwayne Wade, and they got Rodney Hood and George Hill in a three way trade with the Jazz and Kings for Shumpert and Crowder. Not, not who <laughs> LeBron like are, this what this is what I'm saying. I told you this before we started recording. Every single one of these deals has been in place for weeks. And today, since it's trade deadline, they're like, all right, 
Go. And then all of these deals happen. They've been in place because every you... every single one has been only went down because the other ones were able to go down. You know what I mean? They're all intertwined. It's like a Pixar movie. And all the Pixar movies are intertwined. Every single one of these trades was intertwined with each other. Do you know do you think the Cavaliers will hand out the hello my name is stickers at practice on <laughs> on Sunday? Probably. Oh, oh, Probably. Like, dude, who's left? Who's left? Um LeBron, J.R. Smith, Kevin Love, um there's a new white guy on the team, Osman or something like that. Yeah. Like there's like what four people left? And like you said too before we started recording like how are they going to go out there and play against the Hawks when they have there, a, they have a road game tomorrow in Atlanta? Yeah, there's no way. Less than 24 there's, hours. There's no way they're going to know the the systems. There's no way they're going to know the play calls. It's going to be Tyrod lose and tell him go, go play basketball. And it's gonna, it's going to be a pickup game, yeah. and it's going to be give the ball to LeBron James. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be go dribble for a little bit, and when LeBron comes in, just give him the ball. Which is basically the Cavaliers' system, anyways. Strategy, anyways. Yeah, yeah it's, so it's not going to be. Hey, it's not gonna guys, be um, <laughs> yeah, they're going to be at their first actual team practice. I'm like, coach, that's just passing. That's what we were doing yesterday. That no, that's the scheme. I, like you thought I was kidding. No, the the scheme here is actually just pass the ball to LeBron. That's not going to change from what we did against the Hawks yesterday. Play one, Clarkson dribble up the ball. LeBron will be over to the right. Pass to LeBron. He'll shoot a three. Play two, Clarkson dribble up. Pass this to LeBron on the left. He'll shoot a three. Dr- play three. Clarkson, dribble it up. Pass the ball to Kevin Love, and he'll pass to LeBron. And he'll shoot a three. The only play that won't end with LeBron shooting will be all the oops to Larry Nance Jr. But he's going to get like one every five games. because It'll probably look really cool, though. It will, probably. It, you know what it, sucks, no, it's gonna dude? Be, it's going to be LeBron going up for a dunk, and then him like kind of finger-rolling it for an all oop to Larry Nance for a dunk. The- the thing that sucks, man, is Larry Nance finally gets into a dunk contest in L.A. when he's been a Laker for his forever, right? And, and he, he gets just traded. Gets traded right before. He's gone. It. He's gonna finally be in a dunk competition, and it's gonna be in a Cavs jersey. And he's gonna fly to Cleveland or Atlanta, and then fly back for the festivities in a couple he weeks. Sure, like, he should wear a Laker jersey underneath the Cavs jersey and take it off when he's doing his dunk contest. Just rip, rip it, rip it open. Yeah, <sighs> like Superman. Totally do it. I like the fact that out of all this drama that has been going on with the Cavs, all the finger pointing, Isaiah Thomas running his mouth, everything that's gone down, the stretch that they've lost eight games in a row. I think they've lost like 14 to 22. My favorite thing is that Kevin Love survived. Kevin Love survived the madness. He was the scapegoat. Everybody was saying that it was his his fault. He's faking sicknesses. He's not committed. And Kevin Love survived the trade deadline. Sure, he was probably because... A major role and that was he was injured but he survived man so I, but I, then again i don't know if it's a good thing because now he's the scapegoat in cleveland still yeah he's still everyone's gonna blame kevin love for everything it's like now it's kevin love is not the new guy anymore but now he's like the the guy and it's like lebron jr smith and kyle corver and now it's like still let's pick on kevin's kevin love all right so let's pull out the crystal ball here all these trades go down. LeBron's a free agent after this season. Where does he go? And what happens to Isaiah Thomas? Where does he go? Because, he, like you said, he's probably not going to stay in LA. Yeah, and I mean, he has one year left on his contract. Um, he's never going to get that re that re uh, that tribute video in Boston because the Lakers already played in Boston this year. He's never going to go back to Boston. It looks like. Um, I don't know, man. He's not. He's not the player he was last year. He, since coming back from that hip surgery, he's not the 29 a, ga- 29 a night guy that he was. He's not good defensively. So it'll be interesting to see if the, the Lakers aren't going to try to get him. They oh, freed up with these trades. They freed up room to go get two max contracts, which you got to assume one's reserved for Paul George and one could be for LeBron. And we saw how the LeBron Isaiah experiment worked in Cleveland. So I would still say my money's on LeBron coming to LA or at least being the leader in that kind of race, but it'll, it, nobody knows what LeBron's going to do until LeBron says what he's going to do. Well, so Lakers already had the space to go out there and sign two max players. They, they freed up even more space now 
and can go out there and get some additional pieces. Isn't it ironic that the pretty much the cherry on top of like this really being a, a possibility is a trade with the Cleveland Cavaliers? I feel like the Cavaliers kind of saw this as an opportunity to be like, you know what? LeBron could bounce this year, and we need to at least get something back from the Lakers. Absolutely. We need to pull some kind of assets out of L.A. That way, when LeBron bolts for Los Angeles this summer, it's not like a, all right, well, we're sitting here with our thumbs in areas. It's just like... No, for sure. That's exactly right. Because even with LeBron gone, with those three guys, George... Clarkson and Nance. I mean, it's not a great team, but if they go out there and get another max deal player to replace LeBron, they might be able to do a little bit of damage. Yeah, a little bit. In the East, where the only team is Toronto and Boston. And guess what? Kevin Love will be the last man standing, (laughs) man. He's going to be the guy in Cleveland. I can't wait for Kevin Love to be the guy in and he's gonna dominate as the guy. Watch. He's gonna be. He's gonna be like God. I should have stayed in Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota's so good right now, too, dude. I, they are, man. I was watching. They they're, they played the Cavaliers last night, and they put forty threes up between the two teams. Yeah, I, I think both teams are shooting above sixty three percent. It was insane. Was I was watching the game, game it, last night. It was it was just a shooting gallery. Two OTs. LeBron game winner over Jimmy. Great game. Just a great game. I think Jimmy Butler is just phenomenal. I'm He's so good. I'm dude. so bummed he didn't come, he's not coming to LA because that's the guy that he's from LA, you know? That would have been such a good person to have in LA. He's so good, man. He's so fast. His ball control is so good at full speed. That's he, and he's big too. Minnesota's gonna be I mean, they're good now. Give them like two years to like blend together. Watch out for Minnesota. Yeah, dude, I'm already watching out for them. They're a good middle of the pack team that can make noise. You catch them on a good night, it's tough to beat them. I think they need one more piece to actually be a top notch contender because obviously, right now, no one's competing with the Warriors. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the funny thing is that we're talking about all this stuff, all this trade talk, but the Warriors didn't make any moves because of the Warriors and they're probably going to win again. Yep. It's like the Patriots of the NBA, dude. We're ever, ever, we could talk as much as we want about good QBs, about trades being made, where is this player going to end up, but it's all going to come down to who's going to play the Patriots or the Warriors in the championship and probably lose. Yep. Or barely, barely win on a last second Hail Mary to Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> God, dude, I still think the Patriots are going to win somehow. I, think, I feel like I'm going to get an update. Like Tom Brady leads... Fourth day comeback and Patriots win Super Bowl fifty two. <laughs> like we're kind of in a dream right now where Tom Brady lost. Yeah, seriously, it's like we're gonna wake up and it's gonna be like a, a vision, like oh god, Gronk caught it on the goal line. <laughs> Jesus. Well, that's all I got for this episode. Me too, dude. The football season's over, man. I'm kind of depressed. Well, I can't wait for baseball. Yeah, I'm. I'm really stoked for baseball, mainly because. The Dodgers are going to win the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope so, man. I hope. Uh, you and the rest of you guys, you fans. I, uh, God, I hope so, man. You know what's the worst part about baseball is the fact that we have to go through another hundred and effing million games to get there. That's the best part. No nah, man, uh, it's just so long. Like I'm, I'm all in. I'm all part of the grind. I'll be a part of my fantasy baseball leagues just to get, get me through. But there's so many points of the season where I'm like, there's still 140 games left. <laughs> there's still 85 more games. There's still 70 more games left. <laughs> That's the best part, dude. Baseball every day, every day. No, I I appreciate it. I really do appreciate baseball getting me through like weekdays and stuff and like there's always baseball and so like I'm I'm all completely fine with watching a baseball game whenever. But it's coming. It, it is. It's like it's like winter in Game of Thrones, man. It's just it's like a slow storm just watch on the horizon and then all of a sudden you're in you're in it and it's never ending. Well, in a couple of weeks we'll be talking about it. But yeah, but can't uh, wait. But until then, sports fans, that's all we got for you tonight. Hope you enjoy the episode. Follow us on Twitter, I T W H Pod.
Is that good. right? That was good. Yeah, that was good. That was right. Yes. That was right. I'm at Joe Hill 587 I'm underscore Roberts11. One, one. Go follow Grandstand Sports Network. Full of fun-filled podcast. Fun entertainment. Listen, yep. You're listening sports. pleasure. Sports, sports, sports. More, more sports. <laughs> All right, everyone. That's it for us tonight. Have a good one. Peace out. Later. Skip. Woo. 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 Woo.